Right, just imagine that there is a wound, all right, on the uh, plantar aspect of the wound here. Diabetic foot ulcer, all right. So on general inspection, patient is lying comfortably on the uh, couch. On closer inspection, what you want to see, because you know that just as I mentioned, vasculopathy, immunopathy, and neuropathy, all right. So you talk about the one that will affect the autonomic nervous system first. Autonomic nervous system, it will affect your sebaceous gland, your hair follicles. So you're gonna have a dry, scaly skin. Okay? You can have diabetic dermopathy. You Google your image, diabetic dermopathy. What is that? The reddish, reddish dot and all that, you know, doesn't look so healthy and all that. That's diabetic dermopathy. And then they're gonna have clotal deformity. Because neuropathy that affects the motor, alright, you have loss of intrinsic balance. Okay, so you will have clotal deformity. Then after that, you state the obvious. There is a planta foot wound. Okay, then after that, you go everything to the foot wound first. Describe everything. For example, so from my closer inspection, there is a 3 times 4 centimeter planta uh, ulcer at the planta aspect of the right fourth and fifth toes. The wound, uh, the, the edge of the wound is pink in color. And it is sloping. Sloping means it is at a healing or venous ulcer. Or it can be undermined. Undermined means infection. Alright? It can be punch out ulcer, neuropathic ulcer. Alright? So you need to know about the ages of the wound. Alright? Then after that, look at the surrounding, any erythema or not. Look at the base of the wound. Any granulation tissue, any slough. Any structure that is exposed, for example, bone, tendon. All right, and then after that, you palpate. This one was look, describing for all the look. Then you feel, feel for any increase in warmth compared to the surrounding skin. Feel. Then after that, you feel for any tenderness around it. Then you milk if there is any past discharge. Okay, again ah, uh, when you look ready, you feel, feel for three things. Feel for increase in warmth, feel for tenderness around it, and you milk the pus. Okay. Then after that, only then, you go back to the rest of the foot to move. Okay. Move means anchor, boleh buku lali, boleh naik, ke atas, ke bawah, ke dalam, okay, ke luar. Four movement. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, and eversion. Alright. Now, a lot of times, in a charcoal arthropathy or in a diabetic foot ulcer, most likely what they will have is a tightness. So, they will be in, in equinus. So, at this point of time, you need to do a silver squat test. Heard it before? Silver squat test. You know how to do it? Alright, so, palm here, yeah, face at the heel. The plantar aspect of your foot at the vola forearm. Okay? Like this. Then, after that, you maximally dorsiflex. See how much it can go. If actually it can go all up the way to like more than plantigrade, this is plantigrade, huh? 90 degrees is called plantigrade. If it goes, can, can have a bit of a dorsiflexion and all that, then you don't have to do a silver squat test really. It's okay because you're not going to do anything to the patient's foot. It is only when a patient's foot remains plantar flat, it's very tight. Then you do your silver squat test. Okay? You put like this, put like this, you maximally, and then still until here only, still remain plantar flat. Alright? Then you want to determine why is it remaining plantar flat? Where is the tightness? Could be two places. Achilles tendon or gastrocnemius. Okay. Next, you flex the patient's knee. Okay? Just gently. And after that, continue to push, maximally push. Okay? All the way, all the way. Finish. See if there's any improvement in dorsiflexion. If there is improvement in dorsiflexion, where's the tightness? Gastrocnemius, very good. Because now that you relax your gastrocnemius, there is further improvement. Alright? Why? Because gastrocnemius is a biarticular muscle. It crosses your knee joint, it crosses your ankle joint. It is biarticular. Hence, when you flex the knee, you are also relaxing the, the gastrocnemius. So, there's improved in dorsiflexion. So, that's why if the silver squat test is positive, 
your surgical procedure is going to be a valve fuse or a strayer procedure or gastroc recession here. But if there is no improvement, even if you flex already, the tightness is coming from here. So you do TA lengthening. Different. Okay. Now, moving on is your vasculopathy and neuropathy examination. It's quite extensive for DFU, all right? And you divide that into quantitative and qualitative. Okay, I'll show you here. Just help me write down as I explain uh, what are under quantitative, what are under qualitative. All right, now just slide up. So we're going to talk about the uh, vascular, uh, vasculopathy for the qualitative first. Quality, all right? Check for the CRT of the toes. CRT, less than two seconds or not. Number two, color. Color of the toes, color of the foot. Are they pinkish? Number three, you palpate the DPA pulse, just lateral to your extensor hallucis longus. You palpate the posterior tibialis pulse. You must compare both sides. Eh? For a DFU, at least you go up to the popliteum. Okay? Palpate DPA, PTA, and popliteum. So these are the qualitative vasculopathy examination. Quantitative, there must be a value, right? Quantitative. So you do ABSI. Anchor breaker systolic index. That one you don't have to do, you just have to say that I would like to end the examination by doing a performing an ABSI for this patient. Now, for neurology, okay, neurology quantitative and qualitative. If it is a qualitative, alright, quality, alright, so you do a glove and stocking distribution. How you do it, you get an orange stick and then go from the dorsum aspect here. Bagi tau saya, apabila you rasa tajam, then go all the way. All the way up. And then you compare both sides. See where does where does it start to have the uh, this uh, pinprick sensation. Alright, there's a glove and stocking distribution. Alright. And then after that your vibration. What, what what do they teach you here? Vibration, where do you start from? Which joint? IPJ or MTPJ? MTPJ. MTPJ, yeah. Okay, alright. Because last time I used to learn the uh, MTPJ also. But I don't know. Now, uh, postgraduate, then they have got a different way. So you go with your, uh, your, your own way la, or you re-clarify with your foot and ankle or whatever. But for my postgraduate, uh, we have a lot more points. IPJ, MTPJ, Media Cuneiform, Media Malleolus, and Anterior Shin. But last time I used to do a few points only. Last time I used to do MTPJ, Media Malleolus, and uh, Tiba Tubercle or the this one, the Patella. But uh, postgraduate, uh, we do more. All right, that's uh, propriocep uh, vibration, right? Vibration. Now, proprioception, all right? So you need to show the patient first, okay? You need to show them, and then you need to look here, all right? So this is up, this is down. Hold it at the side. Don't hold it like this. You must remember, hold it at the side, okay? So that they don't feel the pressure, huh? all right? Now, after that, they know what you mean by up, and down already and after that ask them to close their eyes then after that up or down okay or if they cannot feel it here then you do at the ankle ankle you don't do like this huh? you don't do like this because they will know all right you do it at the side up this is up this is down tell me whether it's up or it is down you see ankle they will be able to feel already okay all right so why break mm, yeah. ankle who cannot feel ankle who cannot feel ah? then me lo. But usually they, they can. Okay, so that is all for the qualitative neuropathy. Quantitative, you do your glove and stocking distribution. Okay, you can sit down already. So you do your, uh, no, glove and stocking. Uh, your, this one, sign Weinstein monofilament testing. Alright, so uh, what number do you use? 10 gram. 10 gram, 5.07. Right, 5.07 is uh, the different different sizes. So you use 5.07. The 10 gram means that 
when you are pushing it, when it's just about to bend to a C curve. That is 10 gram of force. Alright. So do you know what where are the 10 points you put your sign when stain monofilament test? Plantar aspect of your here. Yeah. One, three, five. Plantar aspect of your metatarsal. One, three, five. So six points ready. Seven point medial mid planta. Lateral mid planta. Over the heel. And first spread space. Dorsal. So ten points. Alright. Nowadays we just report as it is on it. So what why is this important? The Sun Wednesday monofilament test. What is this used to test? Protective sensation. Huh? Protective. Yes, very good. So they just wanted to hear the keyword protective sensation. Okay? So one of the study, for example, by Armstrong et al. It says that when there is a failure of detect four or more out of the ten points, it has got a sensitivity of 97% and specificity of 83%. To tell that the patient actually has got loss of protective sensation. Okay, all right. But um, nowadays, sometimes we just report as it is only. For example, a uh, patient cannot feel five out of the ten points. Patient cannot feel two out of the ten points. Just like that only. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, what else? the other one, the Malaysia one. Uh, sometimes it's uh, described in the Malaysia CPG. It's a Ipswich touch test. Heard before? Ipswich touch test, touch test, IWS, WICH, Ipswich touch test, whereby you just, so close your eyes and then let me know if you can feel it. Gently just squeeze the patient's toe, first toe, can you feel? Yeah, so first toe, third toe and fifth toe for approximately one to two seconds. So both sides, six points. Mm. Alright, so there's an ip switch touch there that was described in the Malaysia CPG for the FU. IWS, ip switch WIC. Let's go back and find out about it. Alright, so after that, you do the systemic. Because it's DFU, right? Alright, so you need to go to the, the patient could have uh, anemia because you might want to do some debridement and all that. So, conjunctiva pallor, palma crisp pallor, the nutrition and all that for the hydration, skin turgor. You need to check, all right. Then you say, I would like to end my examination with a random blood sugar at the bedside and also perform an ABSI examination for this patient. Okay, okay. Yes, any question, anybody? Yes, uh, yeah, please ask. Of the discriminator, do we? Oh, the discriminator, correct? No, no. I, I didn't even buy it and uh, put it in my uh, examination kit. Uh, what he's talking about is the uh, static and uh, dynamic two point discrimination. You use a discriminator, it's like the round color, and then got a two needle here, and then wider, and then wider, and all that. Uh, so that's, a, that's called a discriminator. Uh, yeah. Any other question? Please ask. Huh? Please ask. Okay, so uh, imaging, you're going to do a plain radiograph of patient's foot lah, in the AP and the lateral weight bearing view. Basically, you want to see if there's any OM changes, lytic lesion, eh? All right. and then any subluxation dislocation that you possibly could see in the chart of foot. All right. uh, the rest of it, no need, but rather you need to order blood investigation. Eh? FBC, ESR, CRP, infection, la, RP, in case uh, you want to, because can affect your kidney also, uh, your diabetes, and then you may want to start some nephrotoxic drugs, so as a baseline and all that. Liver function test to have a gauge on your nutritional level. All right. Uh, then after that, for your management, 
same lah because all these are complex cases especially when you have a comorbid so i would like to manage this patient in a multidisciplinary team setting involving the medical team the uh, foot and ankle team as a wound care team and a vascular team all right uh, keep in view plastic team if you require flat all right now what is important here is that you need to know what is foot at risk when they ask you foot at risk it only means one thing foot with callosity that's all foot at risk means foot at foot with callosity then they may ask you two other questions how do you advise this patient for the foot care advice and then number two shoe wear modification okay all right huh? Okay, so for foot care advice, there are six things you need to tell. Number one, regular inspection of the foot using a mirror at least once a day. Because they got lack of protective sensation, right? So they wouldn't be able to feel there might be some wound at the plantar as well as the foot. Regular inspection of the foot using mirror at least once a day. Number two, they should dry their foot and toes after shower. Number three, apply moisturizer or lotion on the dry scaly area, but avoid toe wet space because you do not want any maceration. You will apply lotion there, it will lead to maceration. Number four, they are encouraged to wear socks when they are out and about. All right. Uh, when they go outside of their house, definitely they have to wear socks. At home, if they are walking around, they have to wear socks. They can take up their socks when they are resting on their sofa, they are sleeping, then they can take up. That's number four. Number five, the socks color should be light or white color to easily detect the staining, if there's any stain. Number six, the toenail should be trimmed straight or cut straight to prevent ingrown toenail. Okay, standard ah, uh, six foot care advice. All right, so next, um, we're gonna talk about the shoe wear modification. Broad toe box. Number two, breathable material. The material can breathe. Breathable material, for example, leather. Broad toe box, breathable material. Number three, firm heel counter. This is called heel counter. H e e l counter, c o u n t r. It must be firm. Hmm? Firm heel counter. Number four, shoe insole. Ah, the insole. Must have an arch support. Number five, covered shoes. Why? So that it doesn't slip off easily. Covered shoes. <coughs> Number six, rubber sole. <coughs> rubber out sole, lah. <coughs> so that it can absorb the. So the shock absorber and rubber also <coughs> so yeah these are the foot care and the shoe wear modification